Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to prove Euler's identity in a way that maybe you haven't seen before. We're going to use differential equations to prove Euler's identity. So let's begin by looking at the function x of t equals e to the i t. Now, if we differentiate this function, we get the following. So, we can notice that the derivative of x is equal to i times the function itself. Or in other words, the function x satisfies this differential equation. And it has an initial value of 1. If we plug in 0 to this function, we get 1. These two statements together are known as an initial value problem, or an IVP. These IVPs, by a theorem called Picard-Lindelof, once certain conditions are met, we know that there exists a solution and that that solution is unique. So, given that e to the i t is a solution, if we can show that i sine theta or i sine t plus cosine t is also a solution to this initial value problem, then they must be the same because the solution is unique. So, let's look at it. Let's go ahead and take the derivative of this function y. we have that y prime of t is negative sine t plus i cosine t. Now this negative we can write as negative one, which is of course i squared. And then we can factor out that i, which is i times y. Furthermore, we can see that if you plug in 0 to this function y, we're going to get cosine of 0, which is 1, plus i sine t, i sine 0, which is 0. So the initial value holds as well. So, since this function satisfies this initial value problem, as does this function, we can conclude that these functions are equal. And in conclusion, we can plug in pi to t. i sine pi is 0, and cosine pi is negative 1. And so we get Euler's identity. Now, this proof does rely on Picard-Lindelof, which is a pretty big result. So we're kind of killing an ant with a shotgun here. But it's still an interesting little proof that I haven't seen done before. So I wanted to make a video and show you guys this neat little proof of Euler's identity. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.